Hi, welcome back to this class, Thermodynamics. In our previous discussion, we talked about the first law of thermodynamics. In that lesson, you know that the internal energy or the change of the internal energy of a thermodynamic system is just a difference between the heat added or the amount of heat added into the system and the work done by the system. And we know also that there are common processes of thermodynamics which are the adiabatic, the isochoric, the isobaric, and the isothermal thermodynamic processes. In this lesson, we'll be discussing about the direction of thermodynamic processes. Again, with me in this course is Dr. Jonathan P. Manigo. For a thermodynamic process, we consider two possible scenarios which are reversible and irreversible processes. And this thermodynamic process in a natural process is irreversible. Irreversible means there is no way that the process of spontaneity when the direction or the transfer of heat or transfer of energy is just a one-way process. This is what we commonly experience in the natural thermodynamic process such as a mechanical energy conversion into any form of heat which is the usual experience when we, for example, rub our hands, of course, we will experience a generation of heat because of the friction between the surfaces of our pump. So that is a natural conversion, natural direction of the, the thermodynamic process by which we can no longer uh, unrub our hands by just getting some amount of heat. And these are non-equilibrium processes. Uh, this kind of thermodynamic processes uh, do not occur at uh, melting or freezing point. We will be discuss that uh, in a few um, minutes. And for the natural flow of heat, again, this is what we commonly experience and by, by instinct, this is what we know about the direction of thermodynamic process, the flow of energy or the flow of heat energy. For example, at a high temperature, if we have a system uh, where there are regions of high temperature and low temperature uh, locations, we instantly, by nature, we, we understand that the transfer of energy would happen from one uh, from uh, allocation or portion of that system with high temperature going down to a portion or location of a system with low temperature. For example, if we consider a sweet corn, if we are to put some piece of butter on that hot sweet corn, the heat energy from the hot sweet corn will be transferred to the butter, which is at lower temperature, melting the butter in the process. And because of natural heat flow, we cannot recreate the original form or shape of the butter by removing the amount of heat this butter absorbs from the sweet corn. That is, without any external intervention, of course, we cannot extract the energy or the heat from that butter and transfer it back to the sweet corn to reshape or to reconstruct the, the original shape of the butter on that hot sweet corn. And what is this reversible process and how this happens and what are the conditions of this reversible process? There are situations where the transfer of energy or the process of heat flow would be reversible. And this happens, the thermodynamic equilibrium process at equilibrium states of a system. And this uh, thermal equilibrium process, this is an idiomatic ter thermodynamic process, which means uh, this is 
accepted as true in the discipline of thermodynamics to occur. And actually, this happens at situations where we just minimal or almost negligible amount or change of energy, the process would go either way, either to this direction or to this direction. And I will illustrate that later on. For example, we have this simple concept of the transfer of heat energy between two systems. Say we have a block of ice uh, placed inside a metal box. And if for the first condition, we have a metal box at 70 degree Celsius and we have a piece or a block of ice at 0 degree Celsius. By our understanding of the natural flow of heat, we know that the transfer of heat would be from the higher temperature object, which is the metal box for this case, the heat would be transferred, the amount of heat would be transferred to the block of ice, making the block of ice to increase its temperature, say at, at a later time, the water, the ice, would be liquefied to reach a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. And that would also mean that the temperature of the metal box would reduce from 70 degrees Celsius down to 40 degrees Celsius. At this point, the metal box and the liquid water or the liquid form uh, of water would now be having the same temperature and that is the equilibrium temperature uh, of the two system. And now, the, this is very obvious and this is considered to be a reversible process. Again, this means that we, without external or without other factors external to the system of the metal box and the water, there is no way we can recreate or we can create the block of ice out of this metal box and liquid water system. There should be something that we can use just to force the amount of heat making the liquid water at 40 degrees Celsius to be reduced back to 0 degrees Celsius and that requires external or other mechanism to do that. However, if a block of ice at 0 degrees Celsius can be, theoretically, if can be melted reversibly, if we put the same system, we consider a metal box at a metal box and a block of ice. At this point, the initial condition is that the metal, both the metal box and the block of ice are at the freezing point at zero degrees Celsius and there are two possible scenarios that would happen. By infinitesimally raising or lowering the temperature of the box, we can make the heat flow into the ice to melt or to refreeze the ice. At this condition where the equilibrium temperature between uh, the equilibrium temperature of the metal box and the water is a very critical condition by which if we will raise or reduce the temperature infinitesimally, that is a very minute, very small amount of change, the ice would have two possible outcomes. It could melt or it could crystallize or it could freeze more. And that is a difference between reversible and irreversible processes. Now to understand better, I would like to share this amazing video performed by Mr. Hacker.
in that scenario where the the water is being touched into an ice cube, it freezes. Okay, that is a point where the water at freezing point, a small amount of heat was extracted from the cold water system, making it to freeze. And if you are to add just a little amount, a very minute amount of heat into a water at freezing point, it will melt. And this scenario and this, this behavior of a liquid water, this is related to the concept of disorderliness, randomness of a thermodynamic system where the motion of the particles or molecules may increase or decrease their randomness of motion, this, their disorderliness depending on the behavior of an intervention, may it be decreasing or increasing the amount of heat introduced into or added into the thermodynamic system. For example, if we add some amount of heat or energy into a certain system or a certain thermodynamic system, this amount of heat which will be absorbed by the molecules involved will enable these molecules to gain more energy, making their motion to be more randomized. And that is why if we are to add a certain amount of heat to water at freezing slash melting point, just a certain as just a small amount of heat, it will make the water molecules motion to be more random. That is why it will melt down instead of freezing over. And if we are to reduce the amount of heat, this will create a less random motion. That is why the water at freezing or melting point, if we are to remove just a little amount of heat from it, it will freeze because we reduce the, um, the randomness or the disorderliness of the, the water molecule in that particular situation. And we will be discussing more about this behavior of randomness or disorderliness in our next sessions when we'll be discussing the second law of thermodynamics. And for now, that ends our session.